Okay, I do have seven o'clock. This is the Farmington Health Board meeting for October 24th. First thing on the agenda, we do have three public hearings. So I ask the town clerk to read the first legal notice. Please take notice that the Farmington Town Board will hold a public hearing on October 24th, 2023 at seven o'clock at the Farmington Town Hall, 1000 County Road 8, Farmington, New York, 14425, accepting a draft local law number 10 of 2023, amending local law number five of 2015, involving the redesign of the remaining lands located with portions of phase three of the Redfield Grove Incentive Zoning Project, and further involving lands fronting along the north side of State Route 96 and the east side of Commercial Drive. Any resident of the town of Farmington shall be entitled to be heard upon this matter at such public hearing, this by resolution of the town board of the town of Farmington. Thank you. Uh, first thing, staff, either Ron or Dan, give us kind of a, an update on why we're going through this process. Yeah, uh, the applicant, Mr. DeFelice, uh, previously had approval for five commercial lots along the east side of commercial drive. He now wants to put four lots there instead of five. He also wants to take the existing single family house there on 96 next to what used to be Cassidy's restaurant and uh, make that a small office building. Next to Cassidy's Next to Cassidy's house. restaurant. Yeah. And, and that uh, uh, is the change in the design of the uh, overall plan. Now we've done this previously on two occasions for Mercer and also for Auburn Junction. And we're following the same process here, bringing back before this board that uh, amendment, to that local law, which was based on an overall site plan. That overall site plan is proposed to be changed as a result of that, we have to recall and amend that local law five of 2015 by uh, setting forth the criteria for the uh, new design of that area. And then forwarding it to the planning board for its review and approval. And then they can get building permits for final site plans along that corridor. The applicant has, and I don't see him here tonight, um, the applicant has submitted documentation to the county. The county is asking us to resubmit it, which we're doing, uh, and they will be meeting on the 8th of November. And uh, we will be continuing the public hearing to the 14th just so that we have the opportunity for the input from the county before we close the public hearing. Great. Thanks. So at this time, anybody in the audience uh, have any questions or comments on this local law number 10 for Redfield Road? Anybody online have any comments on this public hearing for local law 10, phase three of Redfield Grove? Okay, at this time we will. Right. I, I just would like to add that for the past uh, three uh, town ops reports that have been posted, we've had a sketch of the design of this proposed amendment and the details explaining what was going on and where we were at. And so uh, I don't know why the confusion is here tonight, but the Somehow there's something going on that I'm not aware of. I thought they would be here. Okay. Or as we're not going to take any action on this, right. we'll just continue this public hearing until our next meeting in November. It would be on the 14th. 14th of November, correct. Thank you. And the next resolution, the next public hearing is for our 2024 town budget. Notice hereby given that the preliminary budget of the Town of Farmington for the fiscal year of 2024 has been completed and filed in the Office of the Town Clerk, 1000 County Road 8, where it is available for inspection by any interested persons during all regular scheduled office hours. Further notice is given that the Town Board of the Town of Farmington will meet and review 
set a preliminary budget and hold a public hearing thereon at the Farmington Town Hall at 7.01 p.m. on the 24th of October, 2023. At such hearing, any person may be heard in favor of or against the preliminary budget as compiled or for or against any item therein contained. Further, the following is a summary of the entire preliminary budget. Total appropriations, 26,309,341. Less estimated revenue, 16,722,210. Less fund balances, appropriated reserves, 5,948,764,000. Uh, Months to be raised by tax, 3,638,367. Further notice is hereby given pursuant to section 108 of the town law that the following are the proposed yearly salaries of town officials of the town of Farmington. Supervisor including budget officer, 77,190. The four councilmen, uh, $6,327.30 each. Highway superintendent, which includes park superintendent, $93,975.55. Town clerk, including receiver of tax and assessment, $71,249,062. Two town justices, each $27,161.13 by order of the town board of the town of Farmington. Thank you. So we did, uh, we obviously had a tender budget and had a preliminary budget. And then tonight before the town board, uh, hopefully we approve that preliminary budget, and then it'll be our adopted budget for 2024. We did make some minor changes internally. We received uh, late information on our property insurance coverage. It went up 12%, and we had only figured about 6 to 8% in the general highway and water and sewer funds. So we have adjusted that within those uh, departments to show the increase and insurance and we took money out of other accounts to adjust it and keep them even across the board. And then once we approve the uh, 2024 budget, uh, it'll be posted probably tomorrow afternoon on the website for everybody to see. And since it is a public hearing, anybody have any questions or comments at this time on the town budget? Anybody online? on the town budget? Yeah. Tax rate for the town? Yep. There's the town and highway tax went down 30.18%, I believe was the exact amount. And then the drainage is down, the fire services, emergency services uh, is down slightly, and then the the lighting districts and sidewalk districts, most of them are down. There's a couple that are that are up based on the expenses in those those districts. All right, no questions on the town budget. I'll close that public hearing and we'll do the fire contracts. Mm -hmm. Notice hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the town board of the town of Farmington, Ontario County, New York, Farmington Town Hall, the town of Farmington on October 24th, 2023 at 7.02 p.m. for the purpose of determining whether it is in the public interest to enter into new contracts with the Farmington Volunteer Fire Association and Manchester Fire Department for the purpose of providing fire protection to the Farmington Fire Protection District in said town of Farmington on the following general terms. One, Farmington Volunteer Fire Firemen's Association Incorporated shall furnish fire protection for the Northwest and Southwesterly portion and Manchester Fire Department shall furnish protection for the east and southeasterly portions of the Farmington Fire Protection District. Two, the Farmington Volunteer Firemen's Association shall receive, therefore, the sum of $666,645 during 2024, and the Manchester Fire Department shall receive, therefore, the sum of $68,406 during 2024. Three, said new contracts for Farmington and Manchester shall be for one year period and shall terminate on December 31st, 2024. This by resolution of the Town Board of Town of Farmington. Thank you, Michelle. And then we have a third fire department. It's a Sharksville or Citizen Hose Company. And we had a two year agreement with them. So that's why they're, they're not on uh, this year's agenda for a public hearing. 
Um, so at this time, anybody have any comments or questions on fire contracts for Farmington Fire Department or Manchester Fire Department? Anybody on the line? Comments on the fire department contracts? Again, the Farmington Fire Department, $666,645. We make that payment in three intervals throughout the year next year. And the citizen or the Manchester Fire Department, $68,406. We make that in two payments uh, over the length of the contract. Any final questions? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I close the public hearing on the fire contracts. We'll call the regular meeting to order at this time. Uh, Councilman Cassell is not clearly absent. He's still in Italy, enjoying himself with his wife. Uh, I pledge of allegiance, John Drew. Pledge of allegiance to the land. For the United States of America and to the Republic for which you stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we have two sets of minutes the town board meeting of October 10th and the joint water meeting with us in Canadagua and October 10th. Also. So, motion. You move for both of them. Okay. Any comments, questions, suggestions, changes? I abstain from the water meeting. Heard? I'll abstain from the water mass. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Nate abstains from the water meeting. Okay. Privilege of the floor. Uh, first, we have Lindsay Gord. Uh, she's with SUNY Rockport Small Business Development Center. I met her once before when you did a presentation at the county. Yes. So, you have the floor. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Lindsay Ward. I am the Regional Director of Small Business Development Center. I had the pleasure of meeting with Ron as well, talking about how we can support Farmington. Um, so we are a New York State entity. We are taxpayer supported. So we provide free one-on-one -on -one advisement to entrepreneurs and small business owners. So if you're a small business owner that's looking to grow, pivot your business, whatever you need, I have a whole team of business advisors that are serving the five county region. Um, also, we provide workshops, seminars. Um, if you are interested in making an appointment or seeing the upcoming webinars and seminars we're doing, it is www.sbdcrockport.org. Um, for instance, an upcoming webinar that we're very excited is we are working with a new Bill Stadium. Any Bills fans? I do. So, it's okay. Um, so, we're doing a, a webinar with a new Bill Stadium, and they will be talking about. Um, the procurement process of contracting with them. So if you're a small business owner that they're looking for, that could be a huge opportunity. We're also doing fast track to business ownership. So if you are interested in starting your own business, we have a 20 hour workshop we're offering. That's pretty intense, but it's got some really great community speaker involvement. So um, I know Ron, you have a few of our flyers and information. So if anybody is interested for our services, um, feel free to connect with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We'll make sure we put your what your address on our minutes okay. for tonight. All right. All right. Lindsay, before you go, anything you can do to strengthen the offensive line for the Bills? Okay. That would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> I'm here for my husband. He's a huge Bills fan. So I think his blood pressure goes up a little bit. So. Is there any questions? All right. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Good to see you again. Okay, the next presentation, uh, Betsy Brunt and uh, Jess. And we have a new project being we, we introduced here in Farmington. Okay. 
Switch it on. Switch it on. Switch it on. Switch it on. Oh. Great. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Betsy Bragg. I'm the attorney on pleased to be here tonight uh, with this application uh, to give you a uh, preview and hopefully start a uh, process to review a potential uh, project here. Uh, White Stone Development Partner, Justin Miranda is here today. Anna from Castro is going to just see our project engineers here. Um, we have been uh, working with town staff and uh, working hard to bring you hopefully a project that you will be uh, pleased to see. We did submit um, a letter and plans. Uh, we're here essentially to present you a mixed use project on what uh, you probably know as the uh, Glacier Lakes Water Park Conference Center site that is a uh, kind of defunct plan development district that I know it's over a decade ago, I believe that it yeah, came with the approval process. It goes back to uh, 2006, seven and eight. Yeah, a long time ago. And uh, that project never came to be. Uh, I think uh, a portion of the project I think was developed with uh, the apartments uh, off of Quentin Shire. Um, am I right about that, Ron? Uh, but the remaining 65 or so acres remains vacant. It's really a prime location uh, on 332 and 41. And the project that we have to present to you, I think aligns perfectly with what the town has wanted to see for this property. Um, having gone through your comprehensive plan, I think this is exactly what your um, comprehensive plan has been calling for. So we're excited to bring you a mixed use development that really takes advantage of this prime frontage on 332. Um, also it deals with the traffic issues with you know, the divide in the road and kind of some of the issues with the frontage. So we have a great um, kind of commercial piece to the project. Part of the property over here on uh, 41 kind of falls within the area that's already got some light industrial type uses. So we're proposing kind of a light industrial kind of commercial component here. And then the area kind of what we would call the interior area um, is proposed to be developed with uh, a residential uh, multifamily project. Um, it really aligns well with the, the comprehensive plan, um, kind of some of what the county has wanted to see for this property. Um, we're really excited, uh, and I don't want to steal Jess's thunder because he's going to talk to you a little bit about how they designed this frontage area to um, provide some dedicated streets and really comply with your um, MTOD in terms of you know keeping um, minimal um, minimal driveway access on the 332 and really have providing that traffic and access management that is you know hugely important to the town but also you know valuable to the county. I think they would appreciate appreciate that as well as this is a major corridor right into the Finger Lakes region and um, you know so we're minimizing uh, access points and lined up with the future traffic uh, signalization there. So I told Jess I was going to steal this number a little bit. I always seem to do that. Um, so um, the project itself, um, as I said, it's a planned development district. Uh, it's problematic because it is a defunct uh, kind of approval here. So we need to uh, find a creative way to deal with this. So the incentive zoning offers a really wonderful vehicle uh, to allow the flexibility to really give you the optimal plan, nice mixed use project, um, and also provide the town with some infrastructure improvements and um, meet some of the goals of the town in terms of uh, increasing walkability and sidewalks and adding some infrastructure improvements that are uh, beneficial to the community as a whole. I've kind of gone through some of it um, briefly. Um, <clears throat> that all detailed on the plan. We detailed it in the project, excuse me, in the description in the application. Um, our hope tonight is that you uh, consider this project worthy of further consideration, and our goal would be to uh, request that you allow us to proceed to the planning board uh, for further review of the incentive uh, zoning application. Uh, so that's what we're asking for tonight. Um, in terms of the project itself, um, our submission is intended to kind of follow along with what your code requires that we provide you. So we've given you a pretty detailed um, application. Uh, so the incentive zoning process uh, requires that we provide amenities, and those are those benefits to the community, and we've outlined those, um, and I will go through them unless Jeff wants to go through them. Take it. Okay. We are offering you, we are proposing about 1,600 feet of public sidewalk along the frontage of 332. 
So everything that's on here, I think, is identified. We have a key for everything, so hopefully you had a chance to look at that in the submission. So we have the sidewalk along 332. We're offering you um, outside the public sidewalk for the new signalized intersection south along 332 to Farmbrook Drive. Uh, we are providing um, upgrading the future three-way signalized intersection at Savala Boulevard uh, to make it a four-way signalized intersection to allow use of this uh, future dedicated road that would come through here, provide access to the three commercial parcels. Um, we're proposing self-storage currently here, so it would provide access there. It would also provide access all the way through to uh, Quinton Shire so that we could get out from 41 and, and two points um, and also provide access to the new um, uh, residential community. So we would really be minimizing all the access points um, and proposing um, you know, use of this intersection. Um, we're proposing a uh, dedicated road, uh, as I said, and it's about 3,208 feet of dedicated road and uh, 2,715 feet of public sidewalk uh, connecting 332 and 41 and Pentonshire. Um, so again, the idea here is to kind of minimize the access points on 332 um, and uh, limit the number of driveways. I think the um, what you'll see here is the driveways right here. We don't have um, firm commitments on the commercial uses. We're showing you a potential hotel, a um, quick serve type restaurant, and a commercial use. But until we are further along in the zoning process, I think uh, Whitestone is really not able to you know tie down particular tenants. We're fairly confident that we're going with the self storage at this point. Um, you know that again. That's what we're proposing. We're showing approximately 100,000 square feet of climate controlled um, self storage and then um, uh, some cold storage uh, behind that. Again, the whole idea here is to kind of provide compatible uses on the frontages and um, uh, access to the interior. Um, we're also providing a uh, looped water main system that happens to align, I believe, with the uh, dedicated road that we're providing. Um, and we're just generally increasing all of the uh, multimodal transportation area, sidewalks, you know, bike access, increasing access to the Auburn Trail, really just an enhancement, not just for the project, but for the overall uh, community as a whole, just increasing walkability, accessibility, minimizing, um, you know, driveways on 332. So all in all, I think it's a, it's a I just think it's a great layout and completely okay with the context of planning. I think, when I looked at the conference of the plan, the lay would not be more perfectly aligned. Um, the plan, um, let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote you from the plan. Um, wants to see the remaining property develop in a uniform manner, um, recognizing the challenges of the median divider along State Route 32 that restricts an in and out movement to right turns only. Uh, the plan goes on to recognize um, the need for a signalized intersection on 332. Um, for providing, I think it, this is not even a quote. Okay, so I'm not quoting, but these are all the elements of the plan. Um, and that the project be designed, that the development of the property be designed not in a piecemeal manner, but to really provide a comprehensive, cohesive plan for the entire property um, and to provide um, <clears throat> access to the interior of the site without uh, adding additional driveways that aren't necessary. So we're really excited. I think we've got a great opportunity to provide some, um, you know, commercial uses that are accessible and convenient to the neighborhood, uh, but also, you know, really maximize the street frontage without creating, you know, unnecessary driveways or points of conflict. Um, the use along 41 is really compatible with kind of its environment here. And then um, the residential community, again, is designed to be walkable. I'm sure you're familiar with the county housing plan. There's a tremendous need for housing. Uh, what we're proposing is about 300 units um, in buildings. There's a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units. I believe we have, how many buildings do we have? Here. Through an edges, two and a half. Garages, yes, there's parking both. Um, there's uh, garage parking for all of the apartments and also yeah. um, driveways and little pockets of deck parking. There's a clubhouse towards the entrance. 
with all of those kind of amenities that are people people are used to seeing in kind of a you know modern community, um, you know, fitness center, uh, pool, um, leasing office, those types of kind of uh, uses in the clubhouse. Uh, we've also provided the opportunity to connect. So we've got this dedicated road coming through here. We're aware that it's commercial property um, adjacent. Um, connection may not work today, but there's always uh, the possibility of extension of the access uh, further south in the future. You know, you never know what's going to happen in the future in that property, you know, potentially be redeveloped at some point. So the project is also designed kind of for longevity and really for the future, uh, future enhancement of the community, not just benefits today, but benefits going forward, um, supporting the growth and, you know, uh, health and well-being of, you know, the town farming and its residents. So we'd be happy to answer your questions. I can give you more details if you'd like. Um, we don't need a whole lot of incentives, I'm happy to say. Uh, the project doesn't squarely fit with the plan development district that was you know, approved so long ago. There is no water park here. Um, however, I think the only dimensional uh, incentive we need is for the separation of the driveways. We don't meet code in terms of the distance of the driveways, but that's actually a huge benefit to be able to provide these driveways off of this internal dedicated road. Um, so that I believe is our only dimensional uh, incentive as far as use um the the proposal is to have you know commercial uses again we haven't identified a specific use so we'd like to keep that broad to basically any of the general business <laughs> uses along 332 and on 41 i think we're looking at a general business uh light industrial type uses that's also what i think is allowed in both of those districts so um that fits with that and then um I think my submission says there wasn't a residential component in the Glacier Lakes, but there is a small component. There was, and the residential is also consistent uh, in that regard. Uh, so, you know, we're not really that far off from the uses that were allowed or the uh, dimensional requirements of the code. So we're pleased to say that this is actually, I think, a really uh, good design, uh, consistent, you know, as much as we can be with, with your community plans and code. Um, and offers an opportunity to really provide some enhancements and amenities that would you know, be very, very beneficial, not just to the project that makes this a great project, but also beneficial to the community as well. Thank you. Yes, anything? Yeah, just, I think, thank you, Betsy, doing a good job of summarizing it. I did just want to mention that this plan has been through several iterations over the course of the last six months. Some of the first um, things that we looked at with the project that that's is very explaining um, in terms of access, zoning, and adjacent uses really informed what we want to do on the frontage for 332 and 41. Then it became a question of what do we do with the rest of the land that we had? You know, we figured that a natural transition from the light industrial commercial use on 41 and our commercial pass here in 332 was the residential, which is one of the reasons why that was proposed in response to the other uses that we had. Some of the earlier iterations that we had had a much higher density, you know, something similar to what's allowed in the town's uh, multifamily code at eight units per acre. This is, you know, can be considered a lot of units. I'm not saying it's not, but it's at a much lower density, you know, under seven units per acre. And we were able to do is provide significant buffering to Quintonshire, the apartments over there, and also the farm growth to the south with this large village green. We've been looking at some much denser buildings, with these being only 10 units per building or a lot smaller than some of the early things, earlier things we considered. And then as Betsy mentioned, making all these blue roads dedicated with infrastructure and sidewalks to really enhance the pedestrian experience in this whole kind of node and then really be able to get everybody from this area safely over to the Auburn Trail, which is a pretty big attraction. I do want to make one note on the apartments is they are all market rate. Apartments, so similar to um, some of the stuff that you've seen in town elsewhere, but there, it's not like Quintonshire, which was all um, tax credit type affordable housing. These are market rate type. And the uh, market rates somewhere between eighteen hundred and twenty-two a month, right? Basically. All right. Thanks. And just uh, just one other comment, question. No more. I have a question. That's right. Just for the record, just please state your name so the public clerk gets it. Sue Bauer. 
my name. Uh, what was this about the the circular water? Uh, uh, probably the lift water main. Yeah, basically, right now, Quinshire has a dead end road that ends here. Only this portion is dedicated, and the water main is only dedicated to this portion. So, what that means, if there was ever any kind of break here, you could potentially lose water service to other areas in the district. What we're doing is providing a dedicated secondary main through our entire project so that there's a redundant source of water or a looped system. Looped yes. system. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, we do have your we do have your information digital, so we'll figure out how to put that on the website. I have some comments on it now while we're discussing it. I, I don't like the project at all. I think the residential density is way too much. I don't like the 300 plus unit apartment complex there. Um, compared to something across the street would be Hathaway's Corners with a similar commercial layout um, and 140 plus acres with, with less residential units than you're proposing there. Uh, I don't think there's a need for Farmington to become a, a transient apartment community with more massive self-storage facilities. And Farmington is not the problem with uh, housing needs for the county. We're the fastest growing town in New York State. We've driven over 25% of all housing growth in the county. I think there are plenty of communities that would love a 300 uh, apartment complex and, I, and Farmington is just not one of them in my eyes. So I'm a no for even moving this to the planning board as it stands. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next schedule. Uh, any public concerns at this time? Mike. Good evening. Mike Montel with the Cost of Engineering. Here this evening on behalf of Market Center and We've been working with the town staff for a number of years now on your agenda. Uh, Later this evening is a resolution regarding uh, local law number nine. Two weeks ago at the uh, town board meeting, we managed to carry it over uh, while we continue to go through the, uh, the verbiage of the resolution. We appreciate the considerable amount of time that the town has put into this. Uh, we've been working with you guys uh, for a number of years. I believe we're close. We do, uh, in reviewing the proposed the draft resolution we do have a, a couple of fine points that um, we'd like to issues i guess that we would like to uh, discuss with the town board um, one of which is uh in resolution 1a there was verbiage uh that had been uh, introduced into the resolution where it indicated there would be no drive through lanes between any building in the right of way uh, or plot number four on site plan or you know, the overall site plan that we've uh, had in play for a number of years identifies uh, drive through lanes for that particular site. So you know, we would like uh, to check consideration of that urban here in the end uh, since the, you know, the plan that. The overall site plan that's been being considered all along is a the drive through lane there. And that would be part of you know, the site plan review with the planning board. So you know, that's, that was one concern relative to uh, the resolution. Uh, there had been uh, in, in the uh, Part G where there are discussions of setbacks. Um, the resolution at one point, um, we had a discussion of there being a zero foot setback for lot number two, which is the retail expansion. We noticed that that verbiage has been excluded from the resolution, um, seeking clarification so that you know, should it move forward, we don't have an issue. There seems to be a little bit of a conflict between A, the zero, and B, you know. There's also verbiage in there relative to building setback from 
by wiles, et cetera. And you know, that's the main by on the tops as well. So um, that's why you know, there was a concern that the current resolution excludes that. So we're kind of seeking a clarification that it doesn't need to be in the resolution. Mike, I think uh, the code enforcement officer has reviewed that and maybe prepared to make some comments tonight. And we would definitely address yep. it. Yep. Also. yep, we just want to make sure because there was a, there was one point where it was specifically asked if he had it. And I know there's been a change in yeah. his own officer. But um, I think that's it. Uh, Another one, another concern is a fine point, but it was regarding uh, the streetscape um, improvements and the timing in which those are being provided. Uh, the verbiage was changed from a previous consideration that said um, that after lot six and seven, the candidate with National Bank and the Tops new kiosk. That once both of those were done, then all of the rest of the frontage on 96 would be completed. Current resolution says one or the other. The rationale behind why we're asking for it to be combined is the landscaping for those for, for lot six and seven are to be installed by Canada National Bank. Ops is part of theirs. Then FMC would do you know the balance. So we don't want to get into a one of them started, the other one hasn't started, and we're putting components in that the lessee is out of it. So it's a, it's a minor timing, but it's a it's a change in verbiage that um, they had a concern with. And the last um, issue or concern was regarding uh, the payment schedule for the uh, Sewer contribution. Um, I believe the previous verbiage that was being considered by the applicant was that there were thresholds you know, for either the retail portion or certain lots um, in how that payment would be made. The current resolution actually has dates assigned to it as well. Um, so we don't really have a control of you know, when. Most components would be added. We're at, you know, taking into consideration that the dates we need, you know, with the, the thresholds, I believe, would still be there, but the dates at which it would happen, you know, would be removed because we don't have control. Yeah, so you just referred to the board. It was $100,000. Um, lot two, which would be the big building off the end of taps, <laughs> lots four and five, the two remaining. Buildings along 96. So if, if four goes, it's 50,000. Five goes, it's 50,000. Black two goes, it's, it's 100,000. And the only problem is we, we don't know when those are going to be progressing. So I put a date in there of June. 2027. 2027. 2027. 27. 27. 27. Is at that point, they haven't developed your lots. We need the sewer payments. So that's one thing we can we can discuss. We, I think the concern being that things happen and if the project is delayed in five, six years, $100,000 is going to be very much money with the, the rate of inflation that we're experiencing right now. So, I mean, there could be extended beyond further the way that the that you're asking for it, where if you just don't develop a lot, then you're off the hook for some of the money, or most of it. We're just saying that, no, that if you're gonna start the project, then you know, you've got four years to develop the $100,000 for the sewer study. And even in four years, the $100,000 can be significantly reduced in the actual amount that it covers for that for that project. I'm not even a fan of waiting four years for it, but I think that's you know that's not an unreasonable amount of time. We're obviously open. You know, we get through the the zoning approval and see where the town board and get through the planning board process, then you can really the owner can really advertise it. 
properties from promoting them. Hopefully, get something in place. But we'll definitely look at that. Yeah, and, and I'm sure as you can appreciate, you know, I mean, if Pandable National Bank is the only thing that happens, that's the existing, you know, it's a move from one to the other. The way this is written, you know, if nothing else happens, the owners pay one group of have to pay 100000 well, the reason this was split in the first place is that it was burdensome in terms of and it's trying to tie it to look, sewer loads and development. You know, that's kind of how we arrived at, you know, the discussion just now. Instead of trying to break that portion of stuff. Fully understand, you know, but appreciate the development state without without you know one of these components there is no new you know revenue slides to you know to a level as well so again you know just um bring to you a you know concern of the of the owner you know, that as the current resolution you know, so. All right, you know, we'll definitely uh, take a look at those four areas and uh, get back to you. And we'll discuss when we get to the, to the resolution. Oh, perfect. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public concerns at this time? Mr. Peck? I got a question on the letter we got from the water department. We yep. got the water everything. Is there some result of the water will rise in the city of Canada or is there a problem with our water? What's being done to correct that? Yeah, just, just for the record, we buy all our water from the city of Canada. And um, I'll let Dave talk a little bit about it. He, he talks with the city all the time in our engineers, but it's, it's basically the water we're getting as high THMs that we get in the, in the further down the system, higher it goes. Am I right, Dave? Yes. No, no. Yeah. It's a very good question. Uh, as Supervisor Inglesby mentions, the water that we're receiving at our border at North Street is very high in THMs already. That's coming right from the city of Canandaigua. It's, oh, what's that level, Dave? Yeah, and I'm going to get to that. So the limit that we violated is 80 parts per billion. And we've documented that it's coming to us at 72 parts per billion. So we have very little wiggle room on top of that. We're very close to that limit already. We have made the EPA and the city of Canandaigua aware that this is a problem. It's very difficult for us to deal with given the fact that we have very little room to work with. What we have been doing since I've taken over and very aggressively in the last two months is we're flushing our entire system. And while this is the prudent thing to do, based on the fact that we're already getting water that is very close to the violation limit from our source, I'm not certain that this is going to solve the problem. Now, does that answer your question? Yes, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's so the it's a average of four quarters. Yes. So the reading our average of four quarters. We had three quarters ago with it. Very high readings. Yes. Very high readings. So this last reading, as the letter states, it was only eighty point. 80.75. So 0.75 over the limit. So we still had to put a letter out, even with the flushing. Um, we have been talking with the city of Canandaigua. They have uh, six months ago, they started an engineer firm study. I actually saw uh, the city manager at Three o'clock, four o'clock this afternoon. Um, they are looking at a fifteen million dollar 
expenditure on the water plant. One of the first things we're going to do is um, tackle the tank filtration, more air aeration to help with the THMs. And then they're going to build a it tear down a tank and build a bigger tank for more storage. And there's quite a few millions of dollars being put in the plant to not only filter the water more, but over the years provide a higher capacity um, volume on a, on a daily volume. So this is the first time we've heard a dollar amount was today. Uh, probably in the next 30 to 45 days, it'll give the, the customers that information because ultimately we're going to pay for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we already know um, we, we, we don't have a signed intermissible agreement yet, but the current intermissible agreement uh, sets aside $1 million in 2024 for capital projects. And that's going to increase our water rate about 20 cents a thousand to pay for that. Candidate with Farmington Water District gets about 45% of the total water they produce uh, comes to our district. The rest of it goes to uh, Candidate Group, which also provides some to Bristol. And then obviously the, the city of Candidate Group users are part of that 100% formula. And then we sell to the village of Manchester and the town of Manchester. So, you know, it's we have to do the quarterly letter until it gets better. Normally in the winter time, the readings are lower. In the summer with the heat, the readings are higher. So and that's like we said three three readings ago was very high. Well, some of the problem is within our own water lines. Well, it's it's only because of distance. Right. Really, and it can stay in the water. Distance. The northern parts of our district, north of the thruway, are very far from the source. And one of the reasons that I am flushing, there's a, there's a couple of reasons that we're going through an extensive flushing program. First of all, about six months ago, did we have our conference online with the EPA? Yes, it was about six months. Six months ago. That conference consisted of informing the EPA that this was not a localized problem to Farmington. And the EPA understood then that this was region-wide over the Finger Flakes. From that last Wednesday, about a week ago, the EPA sent out, they, they enlisted the Cadmus Group, which is an engineering firm that tackles problems like this. The EPA sent that engineering firm out to meet with myself, Kevin Like from Manchester, Marty Amen from Wayne County. That group, Melissa and Faith, met with all of the local districts involved with this problem. So there's an understanding on the EPA's part now that we're doing the best that we can with this, but they have to go directly back to the source. And further, one of my questions, the regulatory agencies was, as a purchaser, are we entitled to a water source that it has a limit on the amount of contaminants that comes to us? And the answer was that we know that the limit is 80 parts per billion. And the answer was that the water can come to me to put into my system at 79 parts per billion, and that's acceptable. I find that a bit unfair, but Deal. Can't we keep flushing it then? When... Oh, we certainly will. But the point I want to make here is that it was wise on our part to engage the EPA because the efforts of flushing is wasting money. Nobody's paying for that water we flushed. That water's on us. 
Oh, right. Oh, except Farmington. You mean. We have to buy water. water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It out, so the town is paid for it and it's not going to a customer. It's just being. Oh, that's. Well, I don't understand what flushing is then. Yeah. Okay. So, what the flushing program is, is we go out to all the dead ends that are serviced by hydrants and we connect hoses to them and we run those hydrants for about 15 minutes and we check the water quality that establishes a baseline. We went to about 50 different sites. From that point, I look at all the areas that are problematic and we flush those sites, which was maybe probably about 15 sites out of that 50. We flush those for an additional 30 minutes or an additional hour to increase the water quality. But again, as we're pointing out, the concern I have is I'm just dumping that water down the drain. And it's costing us money. And, and the point I'd like to make here, it's costing us money because the water coming to us is not at a level that I can keep us under the limit of being in violation, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. well, it's a difficult problem to deal with. <clears throat> And we want to make sure with this. I know we get these letters from the that we have to send out. We can't just send those letters out as soon as we get the, the results back. We have to coordinate with the Department of Health about exactly what is the wording that needs to go in there. So there is some, some regulations before we can even send these letters out for notification. Um, and not to minimize this, but not too long ago, the acceptable level in the United States was 100 parts per billion. That's still the acceptable level through all, all of Europe. They've lowered it to 80 recently. It is obviously, it's not that we're not concerned about the contaminant, but without some facts, some background of what this is, we're not pushing 90 plus parts per billion. We've never been above the low 80s really as a rolling average, and this is 80.75. So with the with the water already coming to us at such a high level, I think, I, I mean, I commend Dave and his crew for actually doing such an incredible job of keeping it that low and letting them and barely letting those that THM level rise above what we're getting it at. And obviously concerning, we're not trying to minimize it, but that not that long ago, the accepted level was hundred parts per billion. They've lowered it now out of you know advanced safety. So it's not not something when the EPA says that we need extra, you know, they're not, they're not recommending like extra in-home filtration or boiler advisor or anything like that. They just want us to, to notify the the levels we're dealing with. Indeed, uh, we sent the four locations. Well, of course, every quarter. Right. So the, the one we're having a problem with right now is the northeast part of the town. Yeah, there is only one location now that is causing its problem. So from that, I zeroed in on that location and altered our flushing plan again to accommodate what may or may not be happening out there. So we narrowed it down to one location and hopefully this next round, which is coming up shortly, we'll be uh, sampling the second week in November, second full week in November. So uh, my expectation is that the changes we made in the flushing on that particular site will get us down below the average. And you can report that at the next meeting then? Sure. Right. It, it takes us a couple of weeks to get the readings once we sent the samples in. Okay. We, we just we made firms because it was taking four to six weeks for us to get the readings. Yeah. So we're we're hoping with this new firm we'll get them in two weeks from the time we sit them. But then it oh right, it, I'm it's available. Yeah. Right. Here, the, yeah. The samples have to be taken. They have to be sent to the lab for analysis, and then we get a report back. So I can't give you an answer when we sample, but as soon as we do get the report back, then I can give you an answer. My daughter's had two miscarriages. You know, I mean, we're not saying that the water is the reason, but uh, Dr. It's Strong says it could be. And one was at five months, and she lives off Hook Road. I don't know where the water problem is, but. This is. North of the throughway in the very east, um, Maxwell County Road 28 area. Yep. Okay. Well, when it's a life, you know, it makes you, I mean, it makes it different, I guess. 
you know, and you can buy them, but she buys bottled water. Um, she has a Brita, you know, she's trying to do different things, but um, being a mother, I'm concerned. Yeah, as well, you should be. Thank you for your questions and comments. If this continues to be a problem, is there any other option other than buying it from Canadagua? Well, we can put the Monroe County or Wayne Counties. The problem is, we, I don't know about Monroe County yet. We haven't talked to them. Wayne County, we know we have to pump water into our system because of the gravity. And there's a some of that water coming to us from Canada was 120 psi until we regulated it in our PRB valves. So you know it, it's very expensive to put pumps in and pump it north. But that's one thing we haven't talked to Monroe County. We have less connection points with Monroe County. It's one thing we wouldn't have to look at. We can't get it resolved in the city. I can add a little bit to that. Uh, I am researching another solution. As Supervisor Ingalls be mentioned, the city of Canandaigua is planning tank aeration. And what that means is up in the top of the tank where the air space is, they're going to atomize the water. They're going to spray it. PHMs are a highly volatile organic compound. And when you put them in a spray, they just gas out of the water. And with blowers up in the top of the tank, they exhaust the fumes out. And the, TOs, the, the THMs are removed. What I'm researching, because we don't have that option, I'm researching some inline solutions from a company called Exxon. I just went to a uh, went to Wayne County and met with their representatives, and we discussed some of the options. So that's another plan that is also a possibility for us. Uh, my thoughts on this are not to wait around. I want to see every action that's available to us and pursue all of those actions. And that's a good point, I forgot. Uh, so the new Brickyard tank, uh, we are putting it out to bid in December and that will have the aeration filtration into that um, tank. Great. And that would take about 40, 45% of our water will come, come through that tank that comes to the town. So that would definitely help us. And we're trying to attack this from both ends. We, we let the EPA understand that we're doing the best that we can with this, and they really need to go to the source and make certain that they're looking at the source water and get that reading from 72 parts per billion that's coming to us and get that down to a manageable level. And should that not be successful, we're also looking at aerating the new tank we're putting up and also some inline options that could go down on North Street, right at that point where the water crosses into our district. Okay. All right, good questions, thank you. Yes, very good question. Um, let's see. Looking public concerns, we're doing the report of standing committees. What works? I got it. Well, it works, went this morning. Um, we got our update from water and sewer. And park, our highway and parks. We'll start with uh, water and sewer. Um, okay. Try to make it really quick. Some of these are repeated from last meeting. Uh, we are getting quotes for digester three uh, slum, the mixing pumps. Uh, the bid opening for digester two cleaning is going to be on November 3rd. And we talked about the laboratory. We just uh, started with a new service for there. Uh, we also discussed the location of the flow meters and where we're going to put it out, out next time. Um, PS7, uh, the generator was, I think, supposed to be here today. We used to have that work uh, buttoned up very shortly. We got a manhole inspections going on, <clears throat> did inspections in halfway corners. 
Some of that stuff to save it last time. Yeah, I guess that's it for water and sewer. As far as uh, the highway goals, we've got equipment maintenance. Uh, they're working on the shoulders. Uh, they're replacing gutters and catch basins and aprons and sidewalk. No haven. That is completed. Um, they're loading up concrete and taking it to uh, uh, Nardozi and Macedon. Uh, they've been cleaning up the parking right, tree, uh, tree trimming, cutting grass, and along Route 332. Uh, Adirondack Cabling Company is installing cameras around town. Uh, the Highway and Park employees in, in, attended the uh, Nimer Snow and Ice Removal Safety, uh, mowing ditches along farm fields that are when the crops are off. And 104 contractors are doing paving on uh, Ivory Drive. Uh, they're mowing parks, striping fields. Uh, doing hand, handicap signs and stats line, mowing, more maintenance, and, and uh, they finished removing the uh, playground equipment in Farmbrook Park. That is it. Thank you. Hey, Tim, I forgot to ask this morning in public works. Did you see the park signs yet for Beaver Creek Park? Yes, they just showed up today. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm getting mailed back the rest of the town yeah. park signs. Thank you. On operations. Operations about 27 resolutions and discuss them as they come up. Um, Environmental Conserva Conservation Board um, completed their review uh, for updates for the Town Open Space Index. Um, they also have their adopted highway uh, cleanup along 332. That'll be this Saturday morning. This coming Saturday morning. Um, building department still working on updates to the town code and site design. Tap sidewalk grant proceeding on schedule. Uh, everything else will be. I'm fine. I'm on the right Good evening. Reports of other town officials, supervisor. Uh, Don and Larry, you'll appreciate this. We ordered an F-450 two years ago. <laughs> it just came in the last week. It had the cervical body and a crane on it. And it's still new, but it's two years old. <laughs> <laughs> or not two years old, but we ordered it two years ago and it's just getting into us. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done this in a long time, but our town bill paying process. Um, this is just a small amount compared to some two week periods, but this is our vouchers that we pay. Uh, we're over, over 2,090 vouchers that we've processed already to date. Uh, the department started the invoice process. They are audited for math and errors. The correct fund codes are then assigned. Uh, they're audited for math and errors when they come to our office. So the next step would be to come to the supervisor's office. They have to be there on Thursday before the town board meeting. And that gives us a second review. The, there's an invoice number assigned by our account for that. And then we also check for math errors and we reach out to the department uh, if we had heads, if we have any questions. The town board gives a chance between Friday and Tuesday. Uh, some come in over the weekend, some do it on Tuesday. They also review the vouchers and look for errors and they can reach out to the department heads if they had questions on a, on a bill. And if I say I haven't done it in a couple of years, so I figured I'd do it again tonight. Also tonight, the Victor Farmington Volunteer Ambulance Corps, they're at Prosecco's celebrating their 50th anniversary. I'll be told you it's actually their 53rd year, but they're they're having their uh, 50th anniversary, and uh, obviously, this board and the, and the residents uh, wish them well for another 50 years. As there is mitigation, Don and I have been involved with that a little bit with Dan. Uh, I was two and a half hours at the Ontario County Safety Training Facility today, uh, going over information that the provided about two weeks ago. 
and then a lengthy discussion of developing new strategies going forward in the, in the next step we have about two and a half weeks to provide them some more information um it's all part of the hazard mitigation process and then late january february time frame all the municipalities and the county's mitigation reports will be finalized and sent to the uh, federal government Last Saturday, we had a trunk and tree here at the town park. The rain held out great. We've estimated, uh, well, the chamber estimated between 250 and 300 kids come through. So, a great turnout. And then the Kwanis had their pumpkin walk at Beaver Creek Park uh, Saturday night. And they said the same thing. They had probably 300 kids come through, and it was a lot colder. Saturday night, but uh, I don't know. I know they had two years ago, they had 350 pumpkins carved. I don't know how many they had this year. But just over 300. Just over 300. Yeah. So there's P Club and other residents and quantity <laughs> members that volunteer to get pumpkins donated and put them over here by the Parks Department. And they come in a few days before uh, the event. <laughs> Rings in there, and then we try to keep the candles going that night in the pumpkin walk, but it was pretty hard Saturday night when the wind was warm. Everybody had a good, a good time. Now, that's all I have tonight. I mean, parts. Um, yeah, a few things to report on this morning. I told you about our predicament with the loader that it came through. The new loader no longer has a steering wheel. It's a it's a stick steering system in it now. Uh, we were very apprehensive about it. Didn't think it was going to work. So I sent some guys down there uh, to try it out today. And they all loved it. Wow. Yeah, which really surprised me. They said very easy, very smooth. People should pick up on it quite easily. So it's getting delivered tomorrow. Well, I we thought we were getting a, a 962 cat code with the steering wheel like we had in the past, and now they changed it to others. They, they no longer put a steering wheel in a 962 loader, and this was one of the first ones to come out. They didn't, they didn't have any steering wheels left. <laughs> so, um, so we'll be getting that tomorrow. Um, I got just a few quick numbers from our fall cleanup that we had on October 14th. Um, we had 270 households go through. They made 346 trips. Uh, and the shredding was 57 people. Compared to last year, it was 299 for the households, 349 trips, and 98 people used to shredding. So yeah, numbers are spring, spring numbers. No, these are just the fall numbers. No, they need the ones you're comparing to the spring numbers or the last fall. Last fall. Okay. The fall, fall numbers. Fall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the last thing is uh on the farm birth playground, they are scheduled to come in Monday and start. To install it. Yep. Um, Very good. Clerk. Uh, tomorrow, the Ontario County Municipal Court Association has a meeting at the town of Hopewell, and the Humane Society is coming to speak with us at that one. Also, local laws three through eight that the town board adopted at their September 26th board meeting um, have been filed with the state as of 10 5 2023. So, all of them. Go. Did you say that again? The who's coming? The Humane Society is coming? coming to our our county clerk association. We have a we meet once a month and we have different presentations. Presentations. So the Humane Society is coming to speak with us first about dog licensing, basically oh, dogless, right? And yeah, going and getting delinquent dogs, stuff like that. So, but the public isn't invited. No, no. Our 
lead service lane inventory is continuing. We're about 25% complete with that. And we're still a year away from the deadline. So that is on course. I'm happy to provide the fact that we have not run into any documentation of any lead services anywhere in our district. Another requirement by the EPA and the federal government. Yes. Building and zoning. Uh, that time of the year that all the contractors are trying to squeeze everything in to get done before the snow flies. We've been very busy with that, especially the construction inspectors. Uh, and then I've been working uh, with Ron on a bunch of code updates, which we should have at the next few meetings for you guys. All right, we are meeting uh, coming up on November 1st. Uh, we have uh, the public hearing for the three lot resubdivision over in uh, Cousins Crossing. That will actually get this pushed off. But it is a public hearing. We'll still have to open it and then uh, put it off to the next meeting. Uh, we have a uh, site plan, preliminary site plan approval for a single family home um, over on uh, the east side of County Road 28, just south of Maxwell Road. And then, uh, depending on what you do with the Whitestone Incentive Zoning Project, we might have to, we will we'll plan to look at that, start the discussion on that. So that's it. Thank you, Ron, Director of Planning and Development. Okay, um, first I'd like to just embellish a little bit on Nate's uh, presentation. The Conservation Board has been working very diligently um, all year long, as a matter of fact. We started out with a, a, a light membership, and we're now at a full membership with uh, that committee. The timing is uh, great because they're just wrapping up their edits of the open space index updates. They met last night to review all the maps. And uh, I'd like to send out kudos to that uh, board because not only do they do the in house administrative duties that they are charged with under the code, but they also go out and, and adopt the highway on 332. And uh, any board members that want to join them this Saturday at nine o'clock, they'll be meeting down there at the genetical fruit stand. And hopefully the more hands, the faster it'll go. Um, moving on, the uh, town has retained Susan Sherlin uh, to prepare a resident survey, a prerequisite to the upcoming park and recreation recreation master plan update. Um, that draft will be presented to the advisory board next month and then out to the public for uh, there to participate. Hopefully we'll get good participation like we did with the comprehensive plan update. Uh, Loomis Road Industrial Park, um, we sent them a letter reminding them that the clock is ticking, but the clock Picking is coming to an end here in early November and they have to have their drawings in. And uh, I will just say that there's an Ag Advisory Committee meeting coming up next month on the 16th. Hal is here, he can fill us in on that. And the last thing I just wanna report is uh, uh, yesterday I, I met my new primary care doctor that just came in from Minneapolis and uh, she was uh, going through things with me and she says, what, what do you do in Farmington? And I told her what my duties were. And she says, well, you know, I've been recommended by a lot of people here at URMC to look at Farmington. I am coming out to Farmington to, to find a place to live. And I thought, wow, what a, what a great, you know, what a great comment. So URMC, I, I respect. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. That's it. I don't tell them you're here tonight. Uh, our sister's here, Donna. Uh, in communications, there's three small claims decisions. I'm still waiting on one still. I do call the county because I don't ever remember not holding a hearing this late. They referred me to the court, so I'll be calling the court 
because it should have been scheduled two months ago. Um, the only other thing I had was I wanted to publicly thank Ed for his years of service on the Board of Assessment Review. Ed, you're going to be missed, and we are going to be seeking a new member for the Board of Assessment Review. That's all I have. Thank you, Ed. I don't know how many years it's been. <laughs> Can't remember. <laughs> been a while, though. Yeah. Uh, nobody here for recreation and our agriculture advisory board. Hal, anything? Uh, just quickly, uh, we did not meet in October, as Ron says. We will be meeting on November 16th. Uh, the main agenda item is continued consideration of the ag conservation district in the town. Uh, been a slow and arduous process. Yeah, it is. All right, thank you. Um, okay, the departments. Anybody else say anything? This great communications are on file. The reports and minutes are in the file, and then we'll go over the resolution. First one is uh, local law nine, and that's the consent of the zoning. Overlay District, Farmington Market Center. Um, we did have that resolution on last meeting and laid it over to this meeting um, with the new information that Mike and the developers provided us. Uh, I'm glad to have any kind of suggestion for discussion or whatever in this now, but I, I think what we should do is just a, again address this resolution in a future meeting once we get the details in writing and we can agree on the language for the, the resolution. Okay. So, I don't know if you want to table it or I don't Yeah, I whether you use the word table or you got to do a future date. I don't know if it'll be in two weeks or four weeks. You guys, I'd rather not act on it tonight and give them a chance to provide feedback back to us. And then the staff and the then town board can look at that and see if, if that's a real deliver. We have to follow it. We should decide a date. I don't even know. We haven't, it, it hasn't been, it hasn't been moved at all. So. Yeah, we haven't, we didn't have, we haven't moved it. So I just, you know, we'll hope we can bring it up in two weeks. Maybe two meetings from now. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We're just, you know, bring it to the floor and we'll see how the, Conversation go on between now and the next meeting, whether it's on for November uh, 14th or the uh, 28th. Any staff like to? All right, so just, first one, we're not going to act on it, but it will come up to this board in future meetings. Resolution two, the public hearing in draft, draft local law of 10, and that's for amending local law five involving the redesign of the lands, remaining lands in phase three, Redfield Grove incentive zoning project, and further involving lands running along the north side of Route 96 and the east side of Commercial Drive, and continuing the board deliberations on the adoption of said draft local law to Tuesday, November 14th, on board meeting. And the reason that we're moving that to Tuesday, November 14th, is we resubmitted more information to the public planning and they'll meet and provide it, their comments back to us before the 14th. Okay. So, sorry. It's, uh, this is just saying we're delivering it for the 14th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Third resolution is adopting the 2024 budget. So, sorry. A motion and a second. Again, this is how thick the budget is for all the departments. It does uh, lower the general and highway tax rate uh, 
30.18% or going from a dollar a thousand to 69 cents a thousand on the general and the highway budget. And then the overall budget is by the New York State property tax cap formula. The overall budget is over by 108,500. Any other comments? Motion second. All in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Budget is approved. Next one is resolution offering the supervisor to sign the Farmington Park contract for 2024 in the amount of six hundred six six thousand six hundred and forty five dollars. Oh, second. Second. Mr. Ron, second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye, aye, aye. I as a resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign the Manchester Fire contract for 2024 in the amount of $68,406. Second. Motion by Steve, second by Nate. Any additional comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next resolution acknowledges the addition of new members from the Arlington Volunteer Fire Association. Second. Which my John, second by Nate. Uh, always. Glad to see the multiple new members here. I'm always glad. That one, uh, one retired to be back to life action. So that's good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Devon's resolution operating the town firm to town board to refund the planning board fees for a major home occupation and a daycare at 1604 Overtrail Drive with $100 to just a, Jessica Duda. Second. Mr. Nate, second by Ron. All in favor? Aye. 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 Eighth resolution authorizing the waiver of the retention lodge fees for Cobblestone Art Center for various dates in November, December for their art classes. Second. Mr. Second. And these are uh, daytime hours. We've done it in the past for them. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nine resolution authorized to sign a change order GC01 fine in Brownsboro Road Highway Improvement Project and approving the final payment application to Seneca Stone Corporation. Stone, second. Most of my students, second by Mr. Henry Brown. Um, again, between this highway project. And the water project we had on North Road, we had two different but excellent contractors. We like to work with them all the time. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ten's resolution advertising for bids for the Brickyard Road tank and transmission name. So I got motion by Nate, second by Ron. In the pre bid conference will be November 16th at two o'clock here in the town hall. And the bid opening will be November 30th at 10 a.m. here in the town hall. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's probably a $13 million bid. Uh, 11. Resolution authorizes the supervisor to sign the 2024 fireworks exhibit agreement from the Only Explosives Corporation for the annual July 3rd celebration. So moved. Second. Most by Steve, second by Ron. Uh, by doing this early, uh, we get an additional 10% worth of fireworks. And also, uh, the Farmington Chamber of Commerce has agreed to donate another $1,500 towards the fireworks. We really appreciate that. So if you know anybody in the chamber, thank them. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, the resolution authorizes acceptance of easements and stormwater control facility maintenance agreements for 00 Lewis Road LLC, and that requires a more call vote. So, second. Motion by Nate, second by Steve. Oh, Supervisor Inglesby? Aye. Councilman Bowerman? Aye. Councilman Herringdean? Aye. Councilman Holtz? Aye. And it passes unanimous. Thank you. 13 is a resolution accepting two year maintenance bond from Redmond Construction for newly constructed site improvements within phase one of the villa's pathways corners and center zoning project. That's for a total amount of $22,600.50. So moved. Second. 
Around second my seat. Normal process. We go through. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Fourteenth resolution request to report and recommendation from the Farmington Town Planning Board upon the proposed rezoning of land located along the east side of St. Luke 332, South Dakota Road 41 and west of Clintonshire for the PD plan development. That would be changing the zoning to incentive zoning, and that's the presentation you saw tonight. Got a motion? I'll move up, sir. Second. Motion by Steve, second by Nate. Any comments, questions? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Nate spoke up already. Um, I don't have a problem sending this to the planning board to get a recommendation. I will say I'm not in favor of the 300 units of apartments. Um, I think it's too many and too dense for that area. Um, but um, I'm happy to send it to planning and let them give us a recommendation and the project from there. Thank you. In that? Oh, yeah, I'm, just, I'm so far off on the project. I don't know. I'm not going to be all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 15th resolution authorized the close out of the SIP Lane Capital Project. So, second. What's my name? Second by Steve. And basically $5,507 left over in that project. All in favor? Aye. 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 16th is confirmed resolution for replacing concrete sidewalks in the town of Farmington. So, second. Wish me around, second by Steve. And this is in Auburn Meadows and Beaver Creek area, the majority of the areas that we replace sidewalks. So, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 17th resolution authorizes the budget amendment for the general fund uh, credit A2001 PL for $22,500 and debit A1620.4 buildings contractual $20,000 and central processing contractual $2,500. Second. Watch my Steve. Second by Ron. Neil. All in favor? Aye. 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 18 is also a resolution, a budget amendment, transferring money from appropriate fund balance in the streetlight district to Monarch Manor connection fees in the full amount of $180 million. So, second. Wish my name, second by Steve. Uh, had to fix a light there and move some room into the special line. All in favor? Aye. 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 19 is a resolution accepting dedication of improvements for the villas at the Hathaway's Corners, and that also requires a roll call vote. So, second. Okay. Okay. Second by Ron. And finally, we're getting the roads. There's a private road in the villa, so we're doing the sidewalks, water, water and, and sewer. 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 Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Thank you. Supervisor Angel speak. Aye. Councilman Bowerman. Aye. Councilman Casale. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong name. Councilman Heron D. Aye. Councilman Holtz. Aye. Passes. Thanks for slowing me down. Uh, number 20 is the abstract 2023. 20, uh, pay the bill. General fund $105,144.48. Highway fund $558,115.58. County road eight water line $4,052.50. Sidewalk capital project $8,180.00. North road capital project $1,994.97. Town park improvements $2,432. Water tank repair $2,700. $17.50. Storm drainage $2,484.84. Lighting district $1,646.31. Sidewalks districts $22,035. Uh, 
Tour District, $51,438.14. Water District, $36,051.72. Payroll deductions, $8,422.65. Or total abstract, $814,725.70. We have training on the agenda list for employees. Um, day number two. Only gets on your days for the finger lips, whatever it's kind of. We need that information. Remember the late December meeting. Um, we have one item of discussion uh, 20 square drive requesting a waiver of the late fee. I did get a letter from Miss Gail Carlson uh, asking for the forgiveness of the $36. Uh, late charges. What we found out was she had a tenant in the property, and for some reason they didn't pay the bill. And the tenant apparently has shown a bankruptcy settlement to them, and the invoices were supposed to go or The invoices did go to the tenant, but they also went to the home for Ms. Carlson. And for, for that reason, you know, she should have checked. And they got the notice, she should have checked with the tenant to see if they paid the bill. And obviously, you know, the tenant's recommend we don't go to the bank. We can't get a December, send her a letter back. Um, before we have executive session, there's any other public concerns? Any other comments that seem to be online? Public concerns? Okay. Uh, Tom Ward, we do have an executive session tonight to discuss the medical, financial, credit, employment history of a protected person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal for a particular person or corporation. Need a motion to go in executive session. Second. Of course, my name is second by Ron. Uh, it's information only for the town board and won't be making any decisions. No. It would take 15 minutes. So I thank everybody for attending. And we don't need you. We'll tell you, okay. we'll make now executive session. I'm not needed. It's the only time I like to do it. Thank you.